Hello troops, how are we doing to another episode here of the Escapade show in a bit of a different format once again and I'm delighted to be joined with, you know, well, you know, good friend, um, fellow DJ, music producer, label owner um, and just all round good guy, Nico Mendez. What's happening, Nico? What's happening, man? Thanks for having me on. How are you keeping? All good, mate. All good. As you know, we were, we were getting a wee bit of chat earlier and um, we're just trying to keep the mind going. We've been having some amazing podcasts and interviews recently uh, on the show and that's one of the things I was saying to you. I don't think we've fired out this many podcasts. Mm, keep you know, busy, man. Good to see you. Nothing yeah. like a good lockdown to keep us busy. Right, right. That's it, what man. That's it. How you, that? How are you keeping busy then? What's uh, What's been happening to you? Because we're, what, maybe now six, seven weeks into this here? Oh, in- no, no, man. It's, it's, you know, some days it's flying in, some days it's dragging in. I've just been taking it a day at a time, you know. I mean, I've got the music here and my Xbox and everything else to keep me busy. So it's it's, it's, it's going okay, I'd say. You know what I mean? How's the, how's the routine changed much um, from sort of before this kicked off to now? You're breaking up a wee bit there, Gal. What are you saying oh, again? Sorry. Oh, right away, we're back in the game, hopefully, right? I'm just so routine wise, how's how's the routine changed since the start of this to compared to now? Because I know we've all been up and down, so how's the routine? Well, um it's obviously a major change for me as well because I work full time as well as do the music and run the label. So now I've got all this time on my hands. So it, in a sense it's good to have a lot of time to sit there and work on music and focus on other projects and run the label efficiently and have the time that I wanted to before. Otherwise, where I wouldn't have it, doing the full-time job, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But the routine, I mean, the routine's definitely a little bit more of a, a shock to my system in terms of, you know, not having to get up early and my sleeping pattern and things like that is, is, is totally, like, knocked me sideways sometimes. But... As much as it is having like a lot of time to work on music, I'm also I've also got this free time to sit and you know do whatever I want to do, which is also making me waste time in a sense. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's a weird one, man. But I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm definitely enjoying it. But I mean, the thing is, it's like you know I was talking about with Rebecca Heller. It's just it's not easy. You can't you can't be consistently on every single minute of the day being doing something productive. No, no, that's the thing. That's the thing. And sometimes I'm getting bored. Like I'll I'll plan my I, like I sort of sit there with a little journal and I'll plan my week out day to day, just like the little like you know targets that I want to meet, whether it be start a project, finish a project, do some label admin or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'll you know I'll get through that before like noon. And then I'll have the whole day to either sit there and decide, do I want to pick something else up or do I want to just like relax? And, and sometimes that can kind of be counterproductive in a way. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? For me anyway, personally. Well, the point we were trying to make was it's just about not beating yourself up too much in the days mm-hmm. that you maybe don't achieve what you think because it's so easy to, especially in a moment like this when you've got nothing but time to think, is just constantly beat yourself up about everything you're not doing. Yeah. You know, and actually, you know, sometimes it's good to just have a break and calm down. Yeah, some days I'm almost too lax a days ago with it because I know I've got tomorrow now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm kind of like, right, I'll, I'll just push this back and I'll push this back. But some days are more productive than others, so. So with a label then, so let's talk a wee bit about Johnny Johnny. Great concept. Now, how long has it been running? Maybe two years? Uh, so I think it's, we started it early 2017, so it's been a few years now. Yeah, two, three years. There's been some amazing releases. I've always loved the artwork, as you know. Uh, yes, and, you know, you even having a, a, a studio room down in the studio has, has always been great because we, we can always kind of keep an ear on what's been happening and what's doing. So right now, are you getting a lot of stuff coming in? Have you got demos coming in? Or? Um, well, we've got a few projects in the works now. Um we recently just announced that uh, we're putting together a small VA. It's just going to be a collection of artists that we like for a, a compilation album focusing on like deep dub minimal, sort of raw minimal sounds. And we've had like a lot of people, like there's been a really, really high response rate since I announced that a couple of days ago. Um, so we're in the middle of putting that together. 
Uh, we've also got our next vinyl, which I'm not going to tell you who the artist is, but it's one of our favourites and it's going to be a big release. There's going to be four tracks on it. Um, I'm just in the middle of getting all the logistics together for that one as well. So that'll be our third uh, wax release coming on Johnny Johnny, hopefully later this year. It just depends on how things run. Um, we've recently just released our digital uh, EP with myself and good friend Jack Dyer, a.k.a. Jack Saravant, or Lotta. Uh, LA Bump PP, that one's called. That's had some really good feedback as well. Um, but other than that, yeah, we're still just kind of sitting on the sideline collecting music and deciding what we want to do with it. Because this is the thing, do you do you put it all out? Do you wait? Do you, you know, it's just such no, a no, the, time. There's what, uh, yeah, a lot of people, like a lot, when people ask me about tunes or want feedback on tunes and stuff, I'm like, the first thing I will tell them is just to sit on it. Always, always sit on it. Do you know what I mean? Because there's always something you can learn and apply to it later down the line, just to make sure you get the utmost out of the music before you let any, like anyone in the public hear it. Do you know what I mean? It's, that's just the one, one rule I live by now. I've got music that I've been sitting on for like two years. Do you know what I mean? So, right. I'm, I'm, and so when, when is it ready? When do you when do you get when do you get to that point where you go right? I think I've tweaked it enough because that that's also one of the things one of the main things that we face here at Escapades where, okay. where, where yeah. the students and people that come through the doors are like, when is it actually ever done? And someone like yourself, it's had multiple releases, it's got a label. Even you're sitting on stuff for a couple of years sometimes. So what what did they do? I remember I remember watching one of your podcasts and I think it was with. Gary Beck, I think it was, and you guys were sitting there talking about the same subject, and Kirkwood said something that kind of, you know, it's always stuck in my head, and it kind of, it gives me a little, like, rule of thumb to go by. See, when you're sitting just making minor tweaks to either the decibel level, or, yeah. do you know, just, like, point one of a fucking decibel, and you're like, nah, nah, that, I think that's, <laughs> like, you know, you know what I mean? If you're just tinkering, then it's time to move on, or just come back to it when you feel like you can actually add something more to the track, you know what I mean? But I think, though, also, <clears throat> I think this it does come with that experience, though, because if you are an up-and-comer and you've never had something released, and then mm. all of a sudden maybe some big DJ that you've looked up to has maybe supported your track or you've managed to get on a label, it's, mm. it's quite a rushed game because you're so excited by this new thing. You're yeah. now... You're well, released now. Well, I, like, even, like, see being part of the rat race, do you know what I mean? Like, I, it took me a while to learn that you don't have to, like, as soon as you f finish a project, you don't need to fire it out to, like, loads of people just to get feedback or, like, try and get it on the biggest, best labels. You know, be patient with your tunes. And, you like, like when you're talking about when you know it's finished, it also comes with experience, do you know what I mean? Like, you'll know, like, I've had guys come to me and send me a track and it'll have like an element in there that kind of sticks out and you're like, nah, that, you know, that's taken away from the project or it's not really doing anything. And what they say is, oh, well, I felt like it needed this extra. But when you've got like experience to be able to like get the most out of each like channel strip and stuff like that, you'll know whether it needs more or less the yeah. more you work with music. Do you know what I mean? And it kind of comes, it's like an intuition. You're like, right, that's it. Don't need to touch this anymore. Do you know what I mean? That's it. I think, um, you know, feedback is key and, and, and but how you take that feedback as well because, again, mm -hmm. it's your project. You're so precious towards it. It's like, no, I don't need to change this out. Like, I, I, yeah, that, when someone asks me to comment on their own, like, music, I, I get, like, a bit uh, standoffish because, music, like, music's, it's art, it's subjective, it's open to interpretation. Do you know what I mean? So for me to sit there and go, Nah, I would like to hear this and this and this. It's irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant. It's how you want your music to sound, and that's all that matters. So if you're happy with it, then that's it. I mean, you can give constructive feedback on it, getting the most out of the sound. But when he says, or oh, when someone says to me, or oh, does this bass line sound good? Is there enough groove in it? I'm like, well, what? what's your opinion on it? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't like sitting there telling people to change pieces of their music because it's not my music. No, that's it, that's it. But I mean, it's an interesting point though, because like, even like me, I mean, you you know, I'm early on in my sort of music making journey and I, I, I always send anything that I've made in a day or whatever to the likes of yourself or to Jack, mm. even mm. because you, well, I totally just respect you guys and I'm more like... like, like 
there's nothing wrong with having this close knit circle that you yeah. can bounce ideas off of. That's great. That's great to have that sort of feedback. Oh, totally, because you guys give me it raw as well, and you're like, "Gal, right, do this, do that," and it's like, ah, that's why I do it. I'm never doing it for like, oh, that was an amazing piece of music. I know I'm still working towards that, but it's like, if I hear any good bit of feedback and even the other day there you were telling me some stuff to, to do with the drums and that you know and it's just wee helpful things that you know and I totally, like totally understand the feeling like see when you're sitting working on a project and then all of a sudden it clicks and you're like holy shit right now I'm here this is what I like hearing and then you're like you get that excited feeling going oh I can't wait to like get it with the troops <laughs> God, listen to this I'm onto something I'm onto something so I understand like where the rush comes from to want to let people hear it because you think, oh, now I'm onto something. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? of course. But actually taking it to the point where it's going to labels and things like that, again, is very, very different and there, there's no need to rush that. And I'm, I'm in a lucky position because I know that because I'm surrounded by guys that have been doing it for years. You know, and yeah. I've got a bit of a different approach, but I still have that mindset of, man, it's a long haul, it's... You know, I don't need to worry too much about this tune right now because mm -hmm. I guarantee just from every producer I know, they listen back to their first few releases and they're like, why did I bother? And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, yeah, 100%. There's like I, my first couple of releases, there's, there's one there called The Lost Wing, and that was the first tune I'd ever produced and put out on a label. And see, listening back to that, I'm like, what was that? Can label thing we're gonna link it below we're gonna link <laughs> oh jesus christ do it do it because like you know it's at the same time it's you know that's my it's roots cool. that's where I come from. it's the and journey I'm, it's the journey and it's, it's about uh, not worrying too much either like and actually uh, realizing yeah. that it's music's about having a bit of fun and and whatever speaking to you is doing that like so many yeah. people now and we see all the time it's like they're trying to just fit in a box they're trying to just, oh, I'll do this thing and that. And it's kind of like, look, man, just, especially yeah. start, just make whatever's coming out. You don't, you know what I mean? It's That's what I'm talking about, the rat race, when I mentioned that as well. You know what I mean? People listen to what's popular and they try and pigeonhole themselves into that specific genre or scene. Yeah. It's, it's you know, I think you're, you're kind of cutting yourself short a little bit in yeah. terms of being able to flex what you're actually capable of musically. Uh -huh. Like I always, when I sit down, I never, like I have tracks and, you know, sometimes I'll sit and reference something just to like kind of refresh my memory on what I'm trying to aim for. But I always like, it's very serendipitous when I sit down and like make music because I'll never ever end up with what I started with. I'll have an yeah. idea in my head, but sometimes yeah, yeah. just goes down a loophole and I'm like, right, let's just see how far this rabbit hole goes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's funny because I'm as early on as I am in my journey, I find that exactly. I sit down and go, right, I want to make this and it's never happened. It's always just whatever's came out mm -hmm. and you hear a sound and it leads you down somewhere that some yeah. mistake makes you think of something. But and sometimes it's the, mistake, it's the mistakes that you, you know, that kind of give you that little flair. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. what do you think is important that, like, it doesn't really matter, right? This question is more just out of interest. It doesn't really matter, but are you better being a producer first or a DJ first? <sighs> to be honest, it's, that's, that's really open to interpretation. You know, you can, if you want, I, 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 maybe it might be better being a DJ first because you understand, like, music and structure and stuff like that. Because a lot of like tracks are built off the same, you know, sort of foundation. Yeah. So you have a better understanding of how tracks progress and, you know what I mean, like when build ups and drops and all that sort of stuff happen. Mm -hmm. But I, I, then again, you know, even if you've never DJed, it takes two seconds to like research the music yeah. on a computer and learn what you need to learn off the internet. So I'd, 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 I'd say it's, it's any man's game. It's any man's. And again, it was just more because, like, I know that myself, I've been a DJ first. And like, and just in terms of just being a listener, mm -hmm. music and knowing every style, and you know, you're 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 much like myself. I mean, me and you bounce a lot of different music off each other, and mm. it's always different stuff. It's never just like one thing. It's from hip hop to this or that. And I do think that's important when you're sitting down to make, because then you're not limited in going. Well, I've got an idea from a hip hop track that I'm going to introduce into this progressive thing now or whatever. So I always yeah. think that it helps. But again, it doesn't really matter because the geekiest person in the world who's amazing at production 
would just probably blow this conversation out the water and say, well, listen to what I've just made. That's another thing as well, because you can get someone who's totally computer illiterate, like computer literate and understands how production software works thoroughly. And then you'll get someone who can like do music theory. Amazing. Do you know what I mean? But then you put him on production software and he's not got a clue. He might know how to write music, but he won't know how to yeah. get the best out of a compressor. Yeah, or that. Some of the other guy who can't, yeah. who can't jump on the, 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 the tools. Exactly, exactly. Right, was which good. is me. Like the, the, you know, as far as I'm going in terms of being able to play anything, is a triangle. You know what I mean? I can't, like I'm very one note wonder. I'll yeah. sit and just to, like blow notes in and overdub them over time. Do you know what I mean? But, but I don't care. It's, you know, Anybody can sit there and create something, and it's it's, it's fair enough. Well, well, talking about actual, like, delving in a little bit into production then, what sort of, like, VSTs and that are you using at the moment? What's your sort of staple diet? What do you love delving into? And what advice do you give people that are maybe sitting with about 10,000 VSTs? Um, well... That's another one, you know, I hear, like, people think, like, I do believe some people think buying a pure amazing VST or, like, a bit of hardware will make their tunes better or, like, make them a better producer or they'll get the most out of it because they spent X amount of money. Yeah. But I came, like, I came from, you know, being very, very sample-based and then with that experience, it taught me to get the most out of, like, samples than it did, like, VSTs. Do you know what I mean? So I was very creative with my cuts and my loops and stuff like that. But I wasn't like very VST orientated. But now over time, you know what I mean? If someone, if I could re recommend any sort of VSTs, I would recommend maybe the ABL3. I recently just got that. That's the acid base from, uh, what's it called again? Audio Realism. Okay. Uh, that's like, it emulates the 303, the Roland 303. And it, I've I've sat for about 17 hours straight there, just messing about and creating my own baselines and saving loads of presets, which I'm really really enjoying the now. Excellent. Um, another one is the Klanghelm VU meter. VU metering is is something I'm still learning at the time, like as we speak. But it's it's a very important tool in terms of like gain staging and stuff because it, when you think about gain staging, it's about how you perceive loudness to what you're what you what you're actually hearing. So your VU, VU meter like sort of tells you mm -hmm. what your what your overall decibel level is. Um so that's a really important tool. So I'll definitely check that one out as well. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Now because again it's just like we we always try and drop some bits of knowledge of, of of you know what other people are using and and how they use it. You know, and we spoke to Harvey the other day there as well and he was saying, you know, you are so much better having like one or two VSTs that you can use at a hundred percent than a hundred VSTs that you use at one percent. And mm -hmm. It, it, it truly it truly is that way. Bigger isn't always better. Um, mm. What's that? I can't even remember the saying. Was being limited breeds creativity or something like that? Uh, yeah. Well, let's you know I mean? that's the saying. That makes sense. Um, mm. But it totally it totally is that. And I think uh, being confined to a certain a couple of things, it just means you're going to learn that that wee bit better and and, and use it. And you know, mm. I, as you probably remember, like from the live show that we have done with Gary Beck and stuff, you know, he's he's still using kind of older software than most people are still using. People are like, why you not upgrade the table and do this or that? And it's like, what, if it works. Works for you, then that's fine. It doesn't matter, you know. And it's like, cause even you, like, I, I would listen to one of your tracks, and I know you have produced it. And it's like mm. you've worked so hard on having that sound that mm. it's like now years have went by. It's like I just know a Nico Mendes production, like I do, it. and it's the same with Stephen. I can hear it, and I just and he's always like, "How do you know that it's me?" And mm. I'm just like, "Cause I just know, man. I just know." And it's and it's quite cool. And I think. I think that's a good thing as a producer to have that sort of statement. Oh, definitely. You know, I mean, it's how you define yourself over the years. And a lot of guys, like I've seen a lot of guys, like a lot of producers come out the woodwork and they're like already up here and they haven't like kind of went through the different tiers and then they kind of phase out because they haven't like sort of established themselves in terms of being a producer and having like a, a, a signature sound. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So tell, talk to us a wee bit about the... The alias, so moda, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. that stuff going now, loving that, and you've been kind of now. It is still quite similar, but you are trying to sort of teeter on some different things now. 
yeah, which yeah. is quite exciting. So talk a wee bit about that, because I know that last track you gave away quite free really did quite well. Mm-hmm. And that was something out the box. So that's definitely stuff I'd love to hear more from you. So how's that going? It's going good, man. It's going good. It, one thing I'll say is like having like a separate alias does definitely give me like a little cushion to fall back on if I don't feel like whatever I'm producing at that specific time doesn't fit into like I've I've basically got two categories now. Harder stuff is for Nico Mendes, more housey, harder housey stuff, Nico Mendes, whether it's more deep dub minimal, that falls into the more that category, you know what I mean? So it's definitely making things a lot easier for me to define where I want to place music and where, like, who I want to release it under. And I've tried it before. I had a different alias called Luda. Yeah. And I kind of just let that phase out over time, do you know what I mean? Because I thought, at one point, I thought, right, what, which is fair enough, you know, if you want to produce whatever you want to produce under one alias, that's, that's okay too. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's all subjective. But yeah, I mean, the whole reason I created more that is because there is a sort of stigma attached to coming from a different scene and breaking out of that scene and what people expect of you under a certain name. Do you know what I mean? It is difficult. So sometimes it is easier just to create a whole new alias and start from fresh. And being able to apply what you know from the years of experience you gained from building up the first alias to the second one. I remember you said this to me. It's like you've came out of nowhere with a brand new career, but you've applied 10 years worth of experience. levels there. Do you know what I mean? So, so I mean, it's, it is exciting. I mean, I, I love, I love seeing the the kind of the different stuff. You know, I just, I mean, I like seeing any any of the guys that I know being creative in a different way and extending themselves. You know, musically, and um, because mm-hmm. I think that you can get stuck in a rut just making the same stuff for years, even if it's like you know, like the same genre, or whatever. It's quite nice mm-hmm. to switch up, even in your own head. How are you finding actually creating during the the pandemic during the lockdown? Um, like I said before, knowing that I've got time on my hands, I'm not too stressed stressed about it. This is why I find it like like when you when we were talking about having like a routine, I don't really have one. I like I'll pick up music when I feel like picking up music right now. Do you know what I mean? I'm not forcing anything. Whereas before, I would like be like, no, I need to go to the studio because even if you sit down and you don't want to sit there, sometimes you will get something that you end up working with. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. so like when I struggle when I start struggling with the music I'll I'll put it down and go on Xbox for an hour and then I'll come back to it and maybe something else will happen but I'm not feeling too pressured in terms of being stuck on any sort of projections or anything like that so no, I think that's a good point and like actually the whole perseverance when it comes to music production because so much of it is hitting your head against the wall and it's like, you know, especially in, in the startup. And I think there's really something to be said about when you just sit and go, right, I don't really want to, but I'm going to just push through. Yep. And then, like, nine times a time, it's like that. it is like that. Like sometimes you're so uninspired and you have no motivation to do it. But if you just even force yourself to sit in front of the production software for an hour, half an hour and just mess about, do you know what I mean? But you're all, you'll always end up with something you want to keep. That's what I've found anyway out of my experience. So, right. So plans going forward. What's happening label wise and that? Because I know obviously we spoke about people sending you stuff, but is there is there official releases in the pipeline coming? And um, next moves. Well, I'm sitting. I'm sitting on quite a a large bank of mod that gear that I want to keep for Johnny Johnny. Um. But in terms of like demos and things like that and going forward with future releases, we've still got the VA. We've got a couple of digital EPs that are in the middle of being built up the now. Um, and yeah, I think we have like a close-knit family now where I can just be like, you got anything for me? You got anything for me? I don't need to worry about demos too much because I have like a certain group of people now who I know I like and whatever they churn out is going to be something that I want for the label so I'm not too worried about the future in terms of releases in that sense what I am worried about is because we actually did have an, an event scheduled for the beginning of June and now that's up in the air and we're still trying to reschedule and things like that so the pandemic is what I'm worried about in terms of when we will be, be able to get back to 
the clubs, basically. You know what I mean? Because it's doing we, what we do and what we love. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we did slow down. Our, our last event was in October. We had a Halloween event and we decided, like, no, let's, let's take a step back and reevaluate instead of doing something every month in terms of events, which made us, you know, it kept us busy. But we wanted more substance. We wanted to do something bigger and better. So we took our time out in terms of events and focused more on releases. But in the same time, we were still planning what we wanted to do event-wise. Event, event wise. Yeah. Now that that's up in the air, it's kind of like, right, what are we going to do? And I've seen like, a, like this pandemic has bred so much creativity in terms of people creating content for labels, like live streams, competitions. Do you know what I mean? like major artists opening themselves up to the community and being able to like offer remix collaborations and even collaborations themselves and releasing it on the label. So it's a good thing. The pandemic has definitely like made the community come together so much stronger than it has before in terms of connecting with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but in terms for us, yeah, I think the main thing for us like going ahead is keeping an eye on when we'll be able to get back in the clubs because in terms of, content and releases and music for us were kind of were pretty solid so what would you suggest to some of the djs or producers potentially at the moment who are stuck in that are maybe freaking out about stuff and they're, they're a bit apprehensive as to what to promote or what to put out have you got any tips or bits of advice for these guys that are maybe sat there really scratching their head going, man, my whole promo was built on like going out and DJing. Now I'm not doing that. What, what kind of stuff can they do to either be keeping themselves busy or to be still putting themselves out there? Um, I would say watch what everyone else is doing. Reference. Reference what other big companies and like brands are doing because they're always going to have like a reinvented strategy. And I think you can take like little bits of that and apply it to your own, you know, your own campaigns and promotions. So, but don't like, don't copy, don't blatantly copy it, but like do it, do something that works for you and that's unique to your brand and your alias and things like that. You know what I mean? And there's so much out there to be able to take something and like reinvent it to work for you so no, it's a good point it's a good point like because at the end of the day if you really are struggling for something or whatever you can look at people that are more successful or bigger in that field and say well what is it they're applying and what is it they're doing that's kind of getting them still busy or whatever i mean it's, it's certainly a fair point mate um, mm -hmm. because there are people scratching their heads and really they probably could be getting more productive but having all this time as you say sometimes it doesn't give you the incentive to take the things off um, because you're like, well, I'll just mm -hmm. do it tomorrow. I'll do it the day after. Do you know what I mean? Which is never healthy. We're breaking up a wee bit. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, there we go. We're back in the game. That's all right. It, did, it comes with the odd technical. I think, I think it's my internet connection that's going here. You uh, think? You back in the room? It's yes, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Right, so we'll finish up on one last question that we've been asking everybody else. Um, and it is to share with us either a DJ set or a track or an artist that we might not have heard of, especially during quarantine. People are looking for music or something to do. So give us something to watch or do. Um, I've been enjoying, because I've been working closely with uh, Cynthia and We Are House, man. She's got a We Are House uh, podcast. It's called We Are... Uh, Hi, it's called We Are House, and then the artist name. And James, I've been listening to James Dexter's uh, mix that he did for that. I think it's We Are House fourteen. Um, so go on, go on a uh, SoundCloud and check that one out, man. There's some sick, sick deep dub minimal house going on in that mix. But um, I'll give you another one as well, which is an EP I recently bought off a of Memoria Music. Uh, it's by DJ Wild. It's called La Sight Door EP. I think La Sight Dior. Check that one out, man. It's really, really good. Class, class. Well, deep dub minimal, so. Okay, well, troops, and thanks so much for uh, having given us your time there, Nico. Um, and oh, anybody who wants to check him out, remember, just go on to Nico Mendez or Moda or Johnny Johnny, and you can catch all the updates here. And, I mean, we, we always try and share as much as we can on Escapade, so you sh I'm sure people have seen it through the page, whether it's a live stream or artwork or whatever. But yeah, big ups during this crazy time. Thanks for the chat, man. It's been good. And thank you, mate. Thank you. So, again, we'll hopefully, I'll see you in the flesh at some point.
Aye, hopefully um, sometime soon, man. Maybe next year. <laughs> I and I'll and I'll, I'll probably get you on a game of Call of Duty. <laughs> uh, you need to get Sea of Thieves. That's one I've been playing recently, man. I've been enjoying that one. I have That's seen a... you. I've seen you on. Do you know what? I think I, I'll I'll get that downloaded. We'll get a game on that. Wicked man. Right. I'll catch up. Here's Nico. Okay. Man, so, uh, 